Hello everyone, I am Madhavas, Assistant Professor in the Department of ENC at Dhanan Sagar Academy of Technology and Management. Here, we are going to study concepts of Introduction to Electronics Engineering of video syllabus. Today, we are going to cover a module three that's about number systems, lecture one. Before we into detail, if you like my video, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon for further notification. First, let us see the content, what we are going to cover. In today's session, we'll be covering about Boolean algebra and logic circuits. And here we are going to see about basic number systems, that's binary number system, binary numbers, number-based conversions, octal and hexadecimal numbers, complements, basic definitions, axiomatic definition of Boolean algebra, basic theorems and properties of Boolean algebra, Boolean functions, canonical and standard forms, other logical operations, and digital logic gates. Next, we'll be covering about combinational logics, basic introduction, design procedure, adders, especially about half adder and a full adder. This is about the entire module. In today's session, we'll be covering about basic number systems. Now let us see the concepts of Boolean algebra and logic circuits. Why we are going to study about Boolean algebra and the logic circuit? This is because of the cause of the revolution happened in the IC industry. The integrated circuits. As we can see, the operation of these systems and some other system is based on the principle of digital techniques. And these systems are referred to as digital systems or devices. So as we can see a simple example here, which we can understand or relate to the IC. We'll take a simple example of a tube light, how to turn it on and off with the help of a switch. We just on the button and off the button. To turn it on, we on the button there. And to turn it off, we off it. So as we can see, here, it is performing two operations, or we call it as two states. And in digital ICs also, we can see the device used in the digital circuit generally operates in one of the two states, known as on and off, or we call it as high or low. And technically, we are representing that high as five volts, low as zero volts. As we can see, the IC operates with the small voltages. Okay, now let us see a first number system representation there. So in any number systems, there is an ordered set of symbols and known as digits with rules defined for performing arithmetic operations like addition, multiplication, etc. So the collection of these digits makes a number which generally has two parts one is integer, another one is fractional numbers. As we can see here, n of b is equal to d of n minus 1, d of n minus 2, d of n minus 3, till d of 0, dot d of minus 1, minus 2, till d of minus y on there. So it is integer part and the fractional part is separated by a radix point, as we can see here, a decimal point, we call it. So n represents a number in decimal. B represents a base or a radix of the systems. What kind of a number systems it is. So n number of digits in the integer positions, as we can see here. So m number of digits in the fractional position. So n of b is equal to d of n minus one, d of n minus two, d of n minus three, etc. till d of zero dot d of minus 1 minus 2 and d of minus n. So this d of n minus 1, which is at the leftmost bit, it is called as most significant bit. Okay. And the rightmost bit here, d of minus m, is called as least significant bit, technical representation of the number systems here. Now let us see the different types of number systems, what we are going to see here today. So some of the commonly used number systems, what we are going to see 
binary number systems octal number systems decimal number systems and hexadecimal number systems the decimal number system because we are familiar with that one since the childhood a decimal number system is said to be of the base 10 or a radix 10 because it uses the 10 digits and the coefficients are multiplied by the power of 10 as we already seen or studied when we were in the childhood so let us take a simple example of this decimal number systems so once we are familiar with this one we can similarly understand the other base number systems so here we have taken a simple example of 7392 so how it is been represented as we know 2 is the unit position 9 is the tens position 3 is the hundred position and 7 is the thousands position so how we write it mathematically is 7 into 10 raised to 3 3 into 10 raised to 2 9 into 10 raised to 1 plus 2 into 10 raised to 0 this is the method how we write or represent this decimal number systems. So we call this one as 7,392 because it's a two position is a unit, means 10 to the power of zero. Nine means tens, it is 10 to the power of one. 100 means 10 to the power of two. 1,000 means 10 to the power of three. You can see it is before decimal numbers, which starting from zero, one, two, three to the power of 10 there. Same way we have to understand with the other number systems. Let us see in the future there. So we have taken another example of a number systems with the help of fractional numbers also there. So as we can see here, the numbers, we read it as 2345.678. Where we can see this one as 2 into 10 to the power of 3, plus 3 into 10 to the power of 2, plus 4 into 10 to the power of 1, plus 5 into 10 to the power of 0. These are numbers which is before the decimal number system. We call it as integers. Now let us see the fractional numbers. So after zero, we start with negative number. So it is six into 10 to the power of minus one, plus seven into 10 to the power of minus two, plus eight into 10 to the power of minus three. So when we convert that, so we call, we write this one as 2000 plus 300 plus 40 plus five plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.07 plus 0 0.008. So this, when we add it, we get the number as 2345.678. So if we understood this decimal number systems, so it becomes very easy for us to understand binary number systems also, hexadecimal number systems also, and the octal numbers, which we are going to cover in this module. So binary number systems, here we call, because bi means two. So here the base or the radix is two. And we call this one as binary number systems. And when we say it is two, it has only two digits represented there. That is zeros and ones, or we call it as two symbols. And these are also called as bits. So let us understand a simple example of representing of a binary number systems. It is one, one, zero, zero, one, base two. As you can observe here, the base represents what kind of number it is. So now, when we see the problem, we have to see the base. Now, since the base is 2, the all numbers are represented in the power of 2 there. Now, let us see. This is a unit position, as we can see, 1 into 2 to the power of 0. This is 1's position, 0 into 2 to the power of 1. This second position, 0 into 2 to the power of 2. This is the third position, to 1 into 2 to the power of 3. And the last one, 1 into 2 to the power of 4. So as we know, these are all 1s. So we call this one as 2 to the power of 4 as 16, 2 to the power of 3 as 8, 0 multiplied is 0, 0 multiplied anything is 0, plus 1 into 2 to the power of 0 is 1, so it is 1. When we all add all these numbers, we get this as 25. So now we can see the binary number system is converted to the decimal number systems, which we are familiar. So previously, we didn't know 11001 was 25. Now, when we convert that to a decimal number, we can easily understand double one double zero one is nothing but 25 in the binary number systems. So, like that, let us see another example 1101 to the power of base 2. So, the positions are 0, 1, 2, 3. So, 1 into 2 to the power of 0, 0 into 2 to the power of 1, 1 into 2 to the power of 2, and 1 into 2 to the power of 3. So when we add these numbers, we get 8 plus 4 plus 0 plus 1 is nothing but 13. So in 13, in binary is represented as 1101 to the base 2. 
So similarly, now let us understand the example of fractional numbers also there. So 1, 0, 1, 1, dot 1, 1 to the base 2. As you already see in the representation there, to differentiate, I have given it with colors. So these are the before decimal point, it is starting with 0. So 1 into 2 to the power of 0, 1 into 2 to the power of 1, 0 into 2 to the power of 2, 1 into 2 to the power of 3. So after decimal number, it is starting with 2 to the power of minus 1 there. So 1 into 2 to the power of minus 1, 1 into 2 to the power of minus 2. So when we convert that to a decimal, we get 8 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1 plus half, that is 0.5 plus 0.25. So when we add this, it becomes 11.75. So this is how the binary number systems are represented. So we can easily convert the binary number systems to the decimal number systems. However, in detail, we'll see it in the later section. Now, we are just understanding the representation here. Okay, so this is how the binary number systems are represented. Now let us see the octal number systems. Similar to the binary number systems, we understand about the octal number systems here. So as we say the octal, octal stands for eight. So here eight different digits we have. That's why we call it as octal number systems. And all the numbers are represented to the power of eight. So let us understand a simple example. So here we have taken three, six, seven to the base eight. As we have seen in binary, it was two. Now in octal, it is base eight. So now let us write that or convert it. So seven into two, eight to the power of zero, because there is in the unit position that's zero. Six into two to the power of eight raised to one. Then three into eight raised to two. When we convert that, so eight square is 64. 64 multiplied with three is 192. So six eights are 48 plus seven, which is equal to 247. To the base 10. So any numbers when we convert it, it represents in the terms of decimal. Why means we understand that number systems very easily. So this is how the octal number systems are represented. Now let us understand another example. 2, 3, 4, 5 to the base 8. So now this number is represented as 5 into 8 to the power of 0, 4 into 8 to the power of 1, 3 into 8 to the power of 2, 2 into 8 to the power of 3. So when we convert that numbers, it becomes 1024 plus 192 plus 32 plus 5. When we add it, it becomes 1253 to the base 10. Okay. So similarly, let us see the third example with the fractional numbers. So it is 25.34. As we already seen in decimal and binary, same way. So 5 into 8 to the power of 0, 2 into 8 to the power of 1, plus 3 into 8 to the power of minus 1, plus 4 into to the power of minus 2. To differentiate between the fractional numbers, I have just taken like this. So it is 16 plus 5 plus 0.375 plus 0.5. So when we add all these numbers, we get this one as 21.875 to the base 10. So this is how the octal numbers are represented. And when it converted, and we have seen the decimal numbers, which we are familiar with. Now let us understand the last one that's about hexadecimal number systems. Now the term hexadecimal itself says it is having 16 numbers, but since the decimal numbers are having 10 different digits, how to represent the extra six digit? Here we are considering the letters or characters called as alphabets. Here A, B, C, D, E, F. Six alphabets are used to represent the 16 digits. That is, A is called as 10, B is called as 11, C is called as 12, D is called as 13, E is called as 14, and F is called as 15. So adding this 10 digits from 0 to 9 and the 6 digits of alphabets, it is called as hexadecimal number systems. That's why the base is or radix is 16 here. So now let us see the examples. So here we have taken 2, 3, 4 to the base 16. So here it is represented as 4 into 16 to the power of 0, 3 into 16 to the power of 1, 2 into 16 to the power of 2. So when we convert that, it becomes 512 plus 48 plus 4, which is equal to 564 in the hexadecimal. So similarly, let us see the fractional examples. That is 25.34. So here 5 into 16 to the power of 0, 2 into 16 to the power of 1, and 3 into 16 to the power of minus 1 because it is after decimal number systems plus 4 into 16 to the power of minus 2. So when we convert that, we get 37.203125 to the base 10. 
So this is how we represent hexadecimal number systems for the integer as well as the fractional numbers. So I hope you have understood the different number systems representation there. If you have any questions, go to the comment section, write down your questions. I'll reply to your questions. If you like my video, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon for further notification and share with your friends for their benefits. Thank you.